Hello agents, my name's Cody Collings and I'm a division agent, just like yourself. Recently I've had multiple requests via comms to share intel of my gear, stats, abilities and talents, known as a character build. Anyway, we need to get you briefed ASAP, let's get started. This build that I'll be sharing with you today is one of my favourite builds. It's an electronics build that focuses on the sticky bomb ability and it's great when playing solo in the dark zone. This build allows you to deal high amounts of burst damage that ultimately kills your enemies before they even have a chance to heal. The high skill power thanks to the electronics allows you to be able to have excellent healing capability too. This build also enables you to go on the offensive against groups of enemies, especially during an extraction. And believe me when I say, this build can ruin a person's day. Anyway, now that you get the idea, let's dive into the details. My two chosen abilities for this build are the Sticky Bomb and First Aid. All gear is recalibrated to boost sticky bomb damage or the blast radius. That combined with high skill power often results in high amounts of damage when using the BFB modification. With my damage output currently at 203,000, a radius of 5.29 meters and a cooldown of only 42.5 seconds. When using the BFB sticky bomb you want to open the fight with it, that way it'll cool down as you're fighting. Secondly, make sure you hit your target. I often see other agents just rushing and it results in a miss and a complete waste of the sticky bomb. It's also much easier if you shoot the floor and don't directly try and fire it at the agent. Thirdly, make the most of choke points so your enemy can only move towards or away from you. If you do this, you'll greatly increase the chance of landing that perfect sticky bomb. Alternatively, you might want to use the flash modification. This deals some damage while blinding, staggering and disrupting the enemy, making other agents unable to use any abilities for a short space of time. It's also very effective against crowds of NPCs and recommended when playing in a squad. For my first aid ability I like to use the overdose modification. This makes healing very very efficient and also grants an overheal if your health is at near or full health. With my overdose healing for 57,000 health and a cooldown of only 27 seconds. Even popping this ability at the start of a fight can be good too. You might waste a small portion of the heal or the overheal will give you that little advantage at the start of a fight and while fighting you're allowing that ability to cool down too. As for the signature skill, I personally like to use survival link when playing solo. This increases damage resistance by 80% and increases movement speed by 30%. It can often save your life. That way if you start taking a lot of damage too, I can pop it, sometimes heal and turn around and drop the enemy just like I did there. It's also very useful if you're outnumbered and in need to retreat or if you're just chasing a rogue and really want to catch up and get that kill. For the talents I like to use Chain Reaction. This talent turns the BFP modification into a WMD modification. If you damage multiple hostiles with an explosion you deal 40% more damage from the blast. So my current 200,000 damage will now deal an estimated 280,000 damage before resilience is applied. And if you open with a frag grenade too, that also takes a bonus from this talent. So if a bunch of agents are all stood around, ball to nut sack like this, then you're practically guaranteed it's going to result in multiple tangos down. And if the RKIA, you want to be Oscar Mike before they return. The second talent I often use is Critical Save. This allows for more survival as it increases damage resistance by 40% for 10 seconds after using a medikit at low health. This talent can really save your life and result in a turnaround during a fight. Just make sure you don't wait too long to use your medikit or else you might just end up dead. My third talent is a favourite among many agents out there and it's called One Is None. Unfortunately this talent has had some issues resulting in the weapon jamming, but the issue is scheduled to be fixed. When using One Is None, performing a headshot on a hostile has 50% chance of not consuming the bullet. This amazing talent allows you to land more shots before the need to reload and this is especially useful when using a vector as it has a lower magazine size than your standard SMG. It's also great because over time you'll be using less ammo too. Just remember, make those headshots count. My final talent is one of three depending on what I'm doing in the game. Usually it'll be the talent Adrenaline in the Dark Zone, adding to the defensive survival aspect of this build. It allows medkits to give you an overheal when not at full health, just like the overdose ability. Alternatively, I might use Steady Hands if I'm using my Black Market AK-47 Assault Rifle as my secondary. This gives a 25% recoil reduction for 10 seconds after entering cover, so I'll pop into cover at the start of a fight and every 10 seconds after. This results in less recoil, resulting in more shots on target and more damage dealt. And my final option is sometimes the talent on the move. Killing a hostile while moving with this talent active will reduce incoming damage by 30% for 10 seconds. 
I like to use this when in a squad with friends or if I'm playing solo and farming NPCs. It allows you to keep on the move without the need to wait until heal, making you more time efficient. For my choice of weapons, I'm currently using the First Wave Vector 45 ACP, and prior to this, I was always using the standard high-end Vector 45 ACP too. I use the Vector simply because it has one of the highest amounts of damage per bullet, with each shot dealing devastating damage at a high fire rate of 750 RPM. It does have decent accuracy and manageable range too, hence why this has always been one of the most popular SMGs in the game. The main downside to the Vector is that it only has a magazine size of 20 as of standard. This means you'll need to take cover between reloads and you can't afford to miss and you can't really engage your hostiles for long durations. This makes the Vector have lower sustainable damage than other SMGs, but that's okay because it fits our build of burst damage. As you can see I managed to roll Brutal, that increases headshot damage by 24.5%, Responsive that makes damage increase by 13.5% when closer than 10 meters, and Skilled that increases signature skill resources by 11.5% after performing a headshot kill. Taking a look at the weapon attachments you can see I've got a nice little T2 micro red dot sight that increases headshot damage by 21% and critical hit chance by 7.5%. An extended magazine is essential with the Vector. As you can see on the bottom here, it increases the mag size by 100.5% and critical hit damage by 37% too. On the underbarrel, a PEQ laser increasing hip fire stability at 31.5%, great for those close range engagements, and additional stability of 49%. And finally, a muzzle break increasing stability by 37% and critical hit damage by 34% as well. As my secondary weapon, I like to be equipped with the custom M44 sniper rifle. This way I'm effective at both short ranges with my Vector and long ranges with my M44. The sniper rifle allows me to pick off a group of enemies at distance without putting myself at risk. The M44 has one of, if not the highest, damage per shot out of all of the sniper rifles. Although the rate of fire isn't as fast as the common favourite, the first wave M1A. Personally, I don't like the M1A as much as the M44. The recoil on the M1A is relatively high and unpredictable as it bounces off side to side. And the time it takes to reacquire your target in your crosshairs is about the same time it takes the M44 to load another round into the chamber. I'd like to also add that I prefer the M44 as it gives a greater sense of satisfaction when each shot lands on target. The only difference being that you really need to make your shots land. As you can see I managed to get the deadly talent on my M44 for a 26% critical hit damage bonus. It also has the talented talent but that's not currently active. And with the third talent being cool headed reducing all skill cooldowns by 5.5% after performing a headshot. Moving on to the attachments I have the MK4 M5A2 scope which is a times 15 magnification scope. This makes it really great for long range engagements allowing me to get maximum precision on my shots. It increases both the headshot damage and optimal range by 21.5%. The extended magazine increases the magazine size by 102.5% and critical hit damage by 31% with the hand stop increasing accuracy by 20.5% and initial bullet stability by 36%. And finally the muzzle brake has a 31.5% stability bonus and a critical hit damage bonus of 32%. For my sidearm I like to use the double barreled shotgun because I like something that packs a punch. After emptying my mag on my vector I'll change to this, fire two shots off, change back to my vector. As you can see I've got the destructive talent on here and my destruction value increased by 18% when using the weapon. I've also got the vicious talent which currently isn't active and I've also got the talented talent which increases skill power by 8% for 13 seconds after killing an enemy. Now we're just going to take a quick look at my gear and gear mods, but keep in mind that stats vary on each drop or craft, so it's unlikely that you'll be able to replicate this build exactly. Also keep in mind that gear is always being replaced and changed. So I'm just going to show you what I use, but more importantly I'll explain why. The chest piece is the Tactician's Authority Vest. I like it mainly as it has good armour and stamina. I like the major attributes and the ammo capacity is always nice too, and the skill attribute is re-rolled to the sticky bomb damage. Jumping across into the gloves section and you can see I have the Tactician's Gloves too. These have electronic stats, SMG damage and critical hit chance which is great for my Vector. And the Sticky Bomb damage skill attribute again. And having two Tactician's pieces gives me that set bonus of 4000 skill power. Here you can see the gloves and the vest in that burgundy red colour. As for the mask I use the Sentry's Call mask with electronics and some stamina stats in there as well. And the skill attribute being increased Sticky Bomb explosion radius. The mask also has a mod slot that I've put a prototype stamina mod in with 152 stamina and 1.5% critical hit chance. And this is me with my mask on and it's amazing because it stays on my face without straps. 
As for my knees, I have the Striker's knee pads and they have great armour, some firearms and stamina on there too. I recalibrated one of the skill attributes and got a mod slot for them. I chose this one because it was initially something really really bad, so it makes sense to recalibrate the less useful attribute. And the prototype stamina mod giving me an extra 153 stamina and 3% skill haste. And this is what they look like on my sexy little legs too. For the backpack I have the Striker's pack. This is the only decent backpack I have so I'm really making do with what I have. It doesn't exactly fit this build perfectly, but it does give me a little bit more DPS to balance out my character a little bit. Once again, having an increased sticky bomb explosion radius on the skill attribute as well. And as you can see, because I've got the striker's knee pads on too, that gives me the two piece bonus of 20% enemy armor damage. It's also got a prototype stamina mod thrown in with 148 stamina and nearly 1600 skill power as well. And finally, I have the Nomad Holster. This is the only decent holster I have, and decent it is. It has some really nice stats and sticky bomb damage bonus as well. Of course, it would be better if it was a tactician's holster for the set piece bonus, but once again, I'm just making do with what I've got. It's also got another prototype stamina mod in here, with this one only having 136 stamina, but it does have 1350 skill power. That really helps towards the sticky bomb and healing. Anyway, it's about time for me to head back to camp and get some rack time. Keep fighting the good fight, and until next time, Alpha Mike Foxtrot.